Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, my name's Adam. I'm going to be uh, hosting here. We've got uh, Andrew Boone, our Senior Manager of CCAS Sales, and Joseph Herde, my boss, Senior Director of Marketing. Um, we're just going to give it another minute or so. You know, people uh, takes time for people to join, so we're just going to allow a little more time, um, just about one minute from now. Please stay with us, and uh, we'll jump in then. Thanks very much. Thank you, Adam. Andrew, how's it going? You're going to keep letting me talk to myself the whole time. You were never going to tell me. I, I just was wanted to see no. I just wanted to see how long it would last. That was quite lips. Yeah. Thank you. Good, Joe. How you doing? How you been? How you surviving? It's all good. All good. What's going on outside your window? <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see. In case anybody's wondering. <laughs> let's see. Let's see if the joke for when people actually show up. <laughs> oh, it's too late. That's fantastic. Hey, listen, wait, no one can get a barber right now. No one, there's no know, judgment right? here. My wife cut but, my uh, hair. Not myself good. Too, but yeah, but I, I tried to do it myself though, right? So I was going to, you know, yeah. experiment in front of the mirror and next thing I know, it's all gone, right? So I tried Man to, she, she, she fixed, she fixed the rest of it. So I know it's very even, looks very nice. You wouldn't even notice if you hadn't told me. Great yeah. story. But I mean, there's lots of people here that haven't gone to the barber in a while either. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know a guy that still wears a, a mullet. I mean, hey. Yeah. At at one point I trimmed mine myself and was just it I mean when you know when you trim your own hair with scissors, things are getting too far out of control. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. Hi, Adam, how are we looking? I'm seeing what, two hundred and thirteen folks here? So yeah, two fourteen, two fifteen, uh, somewhere in there. Yeah. Not a bad uh, not a bad haul today. No, not at all. Um Shall I kick us off, gentlemen? I think you should kick us off with the housekeeping and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, let's go. Ooh, sure housekeeping. thing. Okay, so before we get too far into the content then, sorry, we'll just stay here for now. Yeah, let's stay um, here, yeah. Couple things, couple things to be aware of. If you look at the top of your screen, you've got um, a few icons there. Um, you should see the emoji one, of course. A few of you have already used that already to tell us how you're feeling. Great way to interact. Always love seeing that engagement. Appreciate it. Um, you should see a blue uh, kind of speech bubble with a question mark in it. That is the Q&A. And what we would ask, if you have specific questions that you'd like us to answer, uh, which we'll do at the end in kind of one uh, solid session, please put them in that Q&A function. We would really prefer that over the chat. Uh, reason for that is it just allows us um, to get to your questions in a structured and efficient way. So that would be much appreciated if you could drop them in the Q&A. Finally, um, you should see a... Uh, a headset, I'm sorry, rather a handset icon there, like a phone handset icon. And that just allows you to toggle between uh, handset mode, like phone mode or microphone mode. For example, I'm on a Logitech headset, I'm on microphone mode, but you can switch between them with that. Uh, I think those are the main functions. We can uh, we can probably jump in if you like, guys. Thanks, okay, Adam. let's do it. Let's appreciate that. Thank you very much, Adam. So folks, welcome to today's webinar. We're going to be talking about um, how contact center can impact the healthcare sector. And um, you know, we we would like to start off by taking you down a you know, tell a story. You know, we're going to take we're going to change things up a bit today, right? We're going to tell a story. It's probably going to leave you in tears in a good way, right? It's a it's a tear joker because it's so beautiful. These slides that we have in here that we found fantastic imagery and photos for is just a it's just wonderful, right? So let's let's just jump right in. Now, bear in mind, I'm taking you down a path. We're, we're storytelling here, and then we're going to start getting into the meat and potatoes. So bear with me. There's a strong message here, okay? Effective patient engagement is the new standard. You're gonna you're gonna see some words in here that, unless you are immersed in the healthcare space, might sound a little different. But healthcare is one of those verticals that speaks their own language. You know, they speak their own language in there. They have terminologies and things that they use, jargon and all that stuff that they use. It's a little different. You know, like, for example, you're not going to see the word customer in here. You know, you're going to see patient a lot. So just, just think in your mind, patient equals customer, right? It's, so just keep that in mind. Effective patient engagement is a new standard. You're going to understand exactly what this means as we continue going through here. Now, it's... You know, I probably should have increased the font size on some of this stuff here, but just in case you can't read this, and of course, we will always make sure that we circulate these decks after. But we want to talk about how the healthcare landscape has changed over the years. Um, <clears throat> in the 1960s, 
they had they were using things like shared accounting systems. That was the greatest rage back at that time. I don't know. I, I wasn't born yet. Um, in the nineteen <laughs> in the nineteen seventies, then they had they started to get things like automation in the clinical departments. You know that brought some more efficiencies. Fast forward to the eighties, and you got integrated financial and admin systems, and which the, the concept of managed care started to pop up. Big care uh, too. Yeah, absolutely. Big hair, big hair. We get we we'll get to hair in a minute. Maybe I could add some onto the side where I cut that off. In the 1990s, there was the emergence of EMR. Andrew, what's EMR? That's your uh, emergency or you know electronic medical records. So that's electronic just the digitization of all of our medical records. Lots of controversy around that in the 90s, but I think we're past that today. Yeah, we're, we're past that today. Now you see, you know, that's one of the acronyms you're going to see in here that you would only see in healthcare. You know, in the in the in the financial world or the retail world or the business in general, that would be CRM, right? So think of e, think of EMR or in some cases EHR, electronic health record, as healthcare's version of a CRM, right? Yeah. Uh, in the two thousands, there was broad EMR integration. You know, people were making the jump to analytics and data. This is where people start talking about big data all the time. That was when that was a big deal. So before we talk about what's happening today, let's review. From the 1960s to the 2000s, there was, and he's laughing because he's, he's, you're appreciating this story, aren't you? You, you, you didn't feel, know I'm, I could tell a story feeling, like this. I'm feeling the tear swelling up in my yeah, eyes. Yeah, from the 1960s to the 2000s, there were significant investments made in technology infrastructure. Nobody really thought that much about, okay, well, yeah, we're still, we may have forgotten one thing. The people that are using all this technology and how they are treating the patients. So today, the focus is on patient engagement, right? So like I said, heavy investments in financial, clinical, and technological advances have transformed healthcare. It's great. The advancements that have been made are incredible. But patient experience is still lacking, right? So we'll Joe- talk some more about that, yep. You know how much I love your big marketing speak and your stories, right? But yes. for the people that are on the, on the call that we're following as closely as I was, what Joe is trying to say is, and here's a real world example. When this pandemic hit, we have a customer who's a, a series of, of credit unions across North America. Uh, no, not really, but in a couple of states. And um, they had already invested in our advanced CCAS solution, our, our hosted you know, PBX and, and Unite, et cetera, full-fledged customer, any meeting. And when this pandemic hit, they closed their doors immediately when the emergency uh, orders were uh, handed down. And all of their customer service reps, their tellers, anybody that could immediately was able to work from home. They had prepared, you know, they had transformed their business back in the 70s almost, right? Or 60s even, electronically. Healthcare is just catching up, to case in point. So many, and there's case studies on our website that you can check out after this. So many of our healthcare providers that were not prepared for this pandemic had to scramble to the point where we had a couple of, one big provider, north of 300 seats, had to have all of their personal support workers and, um, you know, uh, nurses and doctor, anything that anybody that could work remotely, they all had to start taking calls, emergency calls on their cell phones and landlines because they were not prepared for this. We had to spin up an emergency solution in three days. And that is the difference in the divergence. But guess what? Healthcare is catching up now. Yep. It has to catch up, right? Yeah. That's a, that's a great, that's a great input. You know, that's a, that's a very nice yeah. addition to this beautiful Real story. Real world example. I think yes, Real world example. Story. And you know what else? People talk about mission critical all the time. There's nothing more mission critical in the healthcare industry, right? Think about it. Think when something goes wrong in there, it could be life impacting, right? Yeah, so there's nothing the more anymore. mission critical. Yeah. Yeah. Calling calling for telehealth is so critical, right? Keeping you at home. That's right. So patients, just like customers in other industries, they have the power to choose their healthcare provider. And first impressions count. Who gives that first impression? Think about this. It's always Who the frontline workers, the right? Frontline workers, right? If you get a bad experience from them, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be relating this a lot to customer service in the mainstream industries because I want to draw that parallel. It's the same thing. It's the same thing, but with even greater consequences on the, on the healthcare side, right? Who's giving the first impression in these healthcare institutions? Frontline workers, like Andrew said. So we well, have I mean, to make sure... 
Sorry, Sorry that could, I was going to say that could be the people on the phone, but also when you walk in, those are the same people usually. The ones that are talking to you on the phone are also meeting you at the door and taking your credentials and booking your appointment yeah. and showing you to the doctor's office. It's a very multitasking environment in the clinic environment anyway. And so those first impressions apply both ways. That's right. So Whoa. here's where we want to break down how first impressions can go wrong and where they can go wrong. Now, this is, you know, this is going to be a reference deck that we circulate after, so apologize for the small font. But we're gonna we're gonna break this down into four different areas. Uh, we're gonna start off with interaction. So and you know, I made sure I highlighted things green so you can just ignore all the talking and focus on the specific things. But think about it. On the interaction side, you call into a healthcare institution, hospital, whatever. You transfer a whole bunch of times. Uh, there's menus that don't make sense. You're on hold for a long period of time. Uh, and then uh, in between all the transfers, you're still having to repeat the same story from beginning to end to every person you get transferred to. That whole experience, does that sound like something you want to go through when you're feeling sick? No, it's a nightmare. Maybe if I lose a leg, I, I would put up with that. Not if I'm Maybe, sick. yeah. Maybe if you're on fire type of thing, type, you know, it <laughs> might, might, might not be too much of a bad thing. But but yes, that's... The best, everybody on this call has gone through this, right? Common. That's, the that's best Exactly, that's common. Yeah. Super common. And, and that's I want you folks to understand... Some some folks get a little deterred on the healthcare space. They just think, I'm not, you know, I, I I am not familiar with the healthcare space. I'm not qualified to sell into that space. Everything we're talking about here today, you're going to realize, hey, wait a minute, that sounds just like a problem a bank would have, or 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 or, or uh, uh, some retail company or something. It's it's similar. Just remember, on the healthcare side, it's more urgent, which is good. It will it, it, it could quicken a sales cycle, right? So anyway. Um, the other point on the interaction side is that, again, like other industries, people enjoy interacting via numerous channels, multi-channel like Andrew likes to refer to, right? Yep. Um, on the engagement side, we have we, we, we always like to throw in some, some, some data and stuff, right? We found online that the third leading cause of death in the U.S. is misdiagnosis. And what, <laughs> what can cause, I know you have a joke around this, what can cause that could be um, folks that are, that that don't that are not able to get through to when it comes to things like their refills, they they, they were supposed to come back for a checkup, they didn't. They had a, a second appointment, they didn't make it. Um, the 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 hospital may have been intending to send out some form of outreach to to let them know about hey here's some some edu some here's some patient education for you. So you've been diagnosed with with X Y Z disease. And we want you to know that here's some lifestyle changes you can be making. Here's something you should be eating, or you should be eating this now. You don't forget to take your pills now, things like that. Um, all of Honestly. that could reduce the number of deaths if you had a proper form of engagement going on. So I, got, I just got to ask, and I just got to call it out. But are you basically saying that with our software, we could reduce the number of deaths in the United States? That is exact. That's this is where the tears are supposed to start coming this down. Your life face. and death. This, this got is serious. Life and that we we can save lives, people. Lives. We can save this, lives. I mean, if if we're talking about first impressions, and your first impression is a misdiagnosis that leads to your death, this is serious stuff. I'm it's in. very serious. I'm we're in. kind of joking around here, but we're very serious. And we have we have seen this happen in terms of hospitals sharing their data in a before and after scenario broken appointments and all this type of stuff. And they, and they tell us, hey, since we've installed your solution, since we've deployed your solution and are using it, we've seen these broken appointment rates oh. go from, you know, right down and, and they give us exact percentage points. So we know how effective this is. And how expensive we talk is it? Like when you, when you, when you're supposed to, you know, imagine 20% of your people don't show up for an appointment. Like how expensive is that for a business, yeah. for a doctor yeah. office? It's insane, right? So we talked about broken appointments. That's another thing. So think about it. When someone misses an appointment, um, the, a diagnos diagnosis of something serious could be missed or delayed. They missed an appointment which was supposed to detect this, this disease. They missed it so that it was not detected. No, it's gotten worse until you, got, until you find another time to go back. Right. And maybe you don't unless until it's too late. Because you don't. You don't want to get <laughs> You know, yeah, but you don't want to get stuck in endless transfers trying to rebook that appointment. You give it up, exactly. and then because you the die. The interaction is horrible. Yeah. It, it, so you see, this is it's a very strong connection that you, you can make here in terms of the whole experience, the whole patient experience with some healthcare institutions are in themselves a deterrent because yeah. they're difficult, they're lengthy, um, they're frustrating. This solution here 
helps resolve a lot of those things, right? Um, we're going to close off with uh, with the, here's another place where first impressions can, can go wrong. There's a disconnect. A disconnect with emerging trends equals a disconnect with your patients. What emerging trends are we talking about? So right now we found another stat, right? Another stat is 40% of Americans use fitness trackers, right? Fitbit, smartwatches, all this type of stuff, right? Um, the M, that's called M Health. There's a whole M Health industry out there, right? It's checking everything from your pulse and your heart rate, all that type of stuff. The M Health industry is expected to hit 60 billion by 2020. That's this year, right? Now, all of those devices, you know, will require will require heavy interaction, in integration with the contact at the contact center level. Imagine if people, imagine if healthcare institutions are able to leverage all those M Health devices. That people are using out there, right? They are, yeah, absolutely. Some of them get, already get, are. Get, get data, yeah, get data back to the to, to your your healthcare person based on what you've been diagnosed with. You you have high blood pressure or something. They got they got to have this thing, you know, providing constant updates on what your what what your your, your heart rate is and your blood proactive pressure is and all medicine, that type of stuff. Right, proactive, proactive medicine, medicine. It's reactive. It avoids all of this other stuff. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, it's going there. You're absolutely right, Joe. So yeah, I mean, so the hospitals they have to the, be aware. You, you, you can't say to somebody on, on on a phone, "Hey, yeah, I've been using my Fitbit to detect this blah 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 blah," and the person says, "What's a Fitbit?" What's a Fitbit? Well, right there, you got to hang up the phone and deal with another hospital because there's a disconnect, right? So they, so we're just summing up where all these first first impressions can go wrong, right? So what happens if these issues are not addressed? And the patients take their health matters and dollars elsewhere because let's not forget healthcare is a big business, right? In the U.S., absolutely. So uh, it's very easy to you know to you have you have choice like in everything else you have a choice in the matter. This and applies you know everything, happens, right? Everything, it's not just your, everything. It's not just no. your GP, which people immediately think of, but your dentist, right? Your your optician, your, your, your pharmacist, your pharmacist. Of course, the yeah. the the guys that you know the blood testing labs, the X ray yeah. labs, you know, yeah. and, and all of those things are competing for dollars. And it's easy to just, you know what? I don't have time for this. I'm going here. Mm -hmm. It's less busy. They can get me in faster. I like right. the doctor, whatever. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm it in it. What would one customer loss cost a doctor like that? That's got to be. A, oh, I mean, it has more, to be up there. It has to be up there, man. It's more than switching your home phone. That's for sure. So we want to talk about how healthcare institutions can exceed patients' expectations, right? And we've highlighted six key areas here. And you're gonna, we're, we're going to talk a little bit more about these six things here and the features that relate to them on the contact center side. So we're going to talk about patient experience and the features that, that or, or the intermediate contact center has to address that. We're going to talk about outreach and engagement. This is a massive area of, of improvement that we bring to hospitals. Uh, and you're going to hear me refer to hospitals a lot, but I'm just using that in a plural sense. I'm also talking about the general Brand. practitioner in a single office or pharmacist and so forth. We'll break it down a little bit more in, just, in a couple of minutes. Um, we want to talk about care team coordination, how we can affect that. We're going to talk about how we can improve operational efficiencies at a broad level. Security and compliance is a massive thing in the healthcare thing. vertical. And Andrew's going to rattle off all the ways we're compliant. And then finally, we're going to talk about the electronic medical record, electronic health record integration. Remember, we talked about those things that are the equivalent of CRMs in different worlds. Well, in the healthcare space, that's their lifeblood. They do, these hospitals run on this. Patient information, yeah. records, everything is on here. And if you integrate that with the contact center, now you're going to get the whole equivalent of customer journey. In this case, it would be patient journey, right? So, whoa, Adam, we have a poll here. Over I to you. Polls. We do. And I should have covered the functionality earlier. But for those who haven't seen these before, these are live. Please do jump in. Give us your feedback. Uh, this is a simple one. It's just one or the other. There we go. It's starting to go. Ooh, um, healthcare prospects who need all help in these areas, right? There she goes. Live Loving polls. It. That's Loving how it, it works. Beautiful. Love the live polls. And I remember this could be something as simple as, uh, I mean, you know, we mentioned we have a business development rep team on, on, on this side of the house, right? What we would normally do in a situation like this where we, you know, and we know we have some folks out there that have some prospects, we offer you this sales team for hire type of thing, right? Well, actually, it's not sales team for hire because there's no charge for it. Right. We provide you partners with a sales team for free, not, not sales team for hire. 
and it's in the form of these business development reps. They know everything I'm talking about here. They know all about all the use cases, all the features, all that stuff. They will call your prospect on your behalf. They'll even identify themselves as they're come calling from your company. Hey, I'm this contact center specialist over here with so, so, and so. Um, and they, they know how to turn the conversation in the direction of this topic. Uncover right? the problems, yeah. Uncover Make, the problem. See if there's an opportunity in That's there. right. Have a nice discovery session. You know, we're just having a chat here. Next thing you know, you're talking about patient experience and broken appointments and all that stuff. And yeah, that's where it gets golden, right? Okay. So it's the, so the, the tear joker, all those beautiful slides that you just saw, that was the, that was the trailer to a movie. Now the movie is going to start. <laughs> movie is going to start now. Okay. We're going to get, we're going to get serious now. This is meat and potatoes. Okay. Will there be, this will there be video? We had us. We had a video. We got oh, a right, fight okay. scene. A fight scene. A fight scene. Like this is guy. Oh my goodness. He's fight scene, done. right? Okay. Now he has to go to the hospital. Healthcare vertical, right? Let's start breaking this down. This is crazy. Now, I, now let me tell you something. I did. This is not a brand new presentation. I did this presentation maybe about a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. and I, when I was updating it for today, the original number was two point nine trillion as of last year. But so it's grown. It's gr yeah. so uh, yeah, three point six trillion now. Post COVID, right? even more. Oh yeah, this is well before that, right? This was yeah, this is actually twenty nineteen figure. So massive industry, three point six trillion. The U.S. healthcare industry is, is what is what the spend is in that space, right? And growing, growing rapidly. Uh, providing a healthcare contact center is a great way to get into this. Uh, not only get into this space, but we're, not, we're, 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 perform we're doing something we can feel good about here. We're saving lives, and we're not joking, right? And you can make some money. You make some monthly recurring revenue, but you know that the solution you have just sold to this healthcare entity is going to help improve the patient experience, right? right. The other thing to remember is with contact center, it's a long life cycle, right? Not life cycle. Yeah, a long life. Long, you, it's a long life cycle. Andrew, what's the average life cycle for a contact center? 10 years, more. 10 to I mean, 15 years. Right? It, it's such a hard thing to display. I always tell people it's, it's more traumatic than buying a house or getting married. Like, it's just like, it's a big deal. So you want to make sure you make the right decision. Yeah. So we want to break down the vertical segments a little bit. This might sound obvious. We're not going to spend a lot of time here, but we're talking about uh, hospital network. When we say, when we refer to networks, we're talking about more than one entity, right? So multi-branch right. hospitals, dental chains, clinics, care, any kind of care facility, um, we're talking about individual healthcare providers, an individual hospital, an individual doctor's office, things like that. Uh, medical offices, we talked about that as well. Medical OEMs, equipment manufacturers, them too. They make a lot of people making. Uh, forgot the name of it. We have customers. We have customers ourselves. We have partners just like you that sell this uh, bio. I forgot the name of it. Sorry, but we have partners like you that sell this. Some of these medical OEMs. And so imagine that. Even yeah, they sell they they sell contact center services to these companies as well, and we yes. help provide them provide service to them. The BPO business processor outsourcers exactly. Type. Yeah, it's a it's and you know one of our customers I don't I don't think we should name drop them, but they converted their business into producing these masks for the whole yeah, pandemic, which is That's fantastic. Right. So they they actually had to expand their phone groups. These are mm. great stories, obviously terrible stories. reasons, but great stories. Um, so we want to talk about some common needs. Um, we just there's a photo, some of you may recognize that, that's New York Presbyterian uh, Hospital. That's actually a customer of ours. Mm -hmm. um, here's some common needs across the healthcare space. They need to scale operations rapidly and meet patient demand. That's the top one. Uh, they need to enable teams to work from home, obviously, especially right now, and they need to onboard them fast. And finally, they need to offer telehealth services. For sure. Right? These Not are the main them. common, yes, that's right. All of the clinics surrounding that hospital that support into those hospital services might be New York Presby Cardiology, New York Presby yeah. Radiology. These are all in, usually in separate, I at least find anyway, remote clinics, right? All have the same requirements. By the way, pe people can't go into the, the less people that go to these hospitals, the less chance of spreading, you know, infectious disease, right? And yeah, yeah, viruses. The less susceptible and, you are to getting this disease. Right. Yeah. So this is all meant disease. to be able to give you support from home and really be the front line to filter out who should come into this hospital and who shouldn't. I mean, this is this is not going to change post our current situation. No, no, absolutely not. 
So uh, we want to delve into some common pain points. You know, Andrew always has a, a wealth of stories to tell. So I'm not going to You go ahead and you feel free whenever you want to throw one in here. But these are just some quotes that we got from, you know, people that we talk to on the healthcare side. They, they say things like, uh, hey, patient, patients complain about long wait times. Yeah. You know, but they, but but at the same time, they know that adding staff to to resolve that would increase costs. So you see the, t the tight, it's like a, they're walking a tight rope. There. That's a very difficult problem to have. The patients are complaining about long wait times, but they are financially restrained in adding staff to resolve that. So what do you do? Well, there's creative ways to solve that problem. Contact center, right? Contact center, absolutely. Stop patients the ring. Are, exactly. Patients are complaining that they've been transferred too many times before they get in touch with somebody. Very I mean, common. If you've stood at a doctor's office and waited in line to check in for your appointment, you've witnessed this happen in real time. You've heard the phone ringing and you're like, is anybody going to answer that? And when they eventually answer it, they're also checking you in and talking at the same time. I mean, that's not always the case. And, you know, obviously in the clinics, this is more the case, but that's the kind of people that use this software. It's not just a call center or a customer service department, the traditional thing that you would think of. This is a way to make those office workers' lives more efficient because they can't get away from dealing with people over the phone and over email and interacting with them for all of the reasons we've just told you, but giving them the ability to deal with that in a much more controlled manner. So instead of every phone ringing constantly, we cue the call. Instead of getting transferred too many times, we wrote the call to the right person in the first place. Um, instead of having no idea why people is calling, hey, we integrate with your EMR and we, it, provides a screen pop directly on the, the agent screen the second the call comes in and you know who's calling. So, you know, and I didn't I didn't get you let you do your last one, but I think it all flows into the last thing. It, right? all, does. Which is, it all does. Yeah. You know, my calls are going to voicemail and no one's calling me back. That's a missed appointment. Well mm -hmm. let's let's make sure those voicemails get picked up through software and integration, et cetera. That's right. I mean you, you wouldn't and, and these you wouldn't think these things apply always to healthcare, but they really, really do. And that's the obviously the point of the call here today. They do. And, you know, a big part of the reason why they do is because, again, they, they, this industry is focused on saving lives, not necessarily a, a, a constant investment in infrastructure. Yeah, they're investing in infrastructure that probably relate more to life saving, like, uh, you know, like some of the, you know, the, the specialized medical equipment, et cetera. But when it comes to infrastructure communications, they, they sometimes park that till after. So what happens Absolutely. is they get they, they get left with this. You know, what, what is usually a, a, a huge bloated uh, on-premise hardware-based system, right? That nobody knows um, how to manage. They don't know how to manage it. Uh, it's highly limited in terms of what it could do. Reporting, you name it. And it certainly can't allow them to, to do uh, work from home because you can't just carve out portions of it and take it home. So, so this is why, this is why uh, in healthcare is especially a, a prime target for this, this solution because they've put off the reinvestment in things yes. that they consider to be less less critical, right? Um, and, and it makes perfect sense. You, you need more ventilators. You need more things like that that's going to keep people alive. And yeah, at home, leave my, my IT stuff for later, right? Yeah. Um, but this is, we're, we're, we're telling you now that this this can help resolve issues for them in ways that they probably haven't, haven't even thought of, right? Just like finance and the big banks already have done, right? And investors, right. in healthcare is That's catching exactly up. That's exactly right. They're catching up for good reason. Some more common pain points: they 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 can't allow their calls to go to voicemail because that will make them not be able to capture patient inf info. And then uh, then when that person just gives up and they call somewhere else, then you've lost a patient and you've lost revenue. That's a, such a simple, small thing, Joe. You're yes. a new patient. You call. Your phone doesn't get answered. You're like, hey, I'm looking for an appointment, blah, 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 new in town. You hang up. Maybe a day goes by. Maybe it's only a couple of hours. I've already called three other clinics, yes. And the one that answers the phone and can get me in is the one I'm going. They've lost that opportunity with me. Now, if they had queued that call, let me wait on it with a great queue or choose a callback option for a couple of minutes and then gotten back to me, that's, you know, they've earned my business and I didn't need to go down the street. It's just such a simple, small little thing about just not allowing a call to go to voicemail. Yep. So we talked about compliance before and, and, and it's a, it's a, a cornerstone uh, item of importance in the healthcare space. So you're going to see it come up again, even HIPAA. after this. Yeah. HIPAA is the one there. for healthcare, right? And for, for a U.S. anyway, HIPAA is <laughs> the one. 
know you know what it stands for, what it protects against, but just be familiar with the term HIPAA and that we are compliant and yeah. that the products you sell are both HIPAA compliant from an access and storage perspective. Because you know, pa protecting patient privacy is, is very, very serious in the healthcare industry, uh, yeah. which is one of the big contentious reasons why this whole EMR situation took so long in healthcare mm -hmm. because it was such a battle. I mean, that your, your old family doctor probably still has, well, at least I know mine, Joe, probably not yours, but he probably has one of those vanilla file folders from when I was a kid. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. When right. I got my head x-ray from getting hit in the head with the baseball. I remember that. Laughing. I know, that was, that was, that, because it's hilarious. <laughs> it, it, it hurts still to this. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, but no, but you know what I mean, right? Like now everything's yeah. online. And by the way, you know the greatest thing about that? Give me my thumb drive. I'm going to the doctor down the street. You're not getting my record. You know what I mean? You take yeah, your record yeah, yeah. with you. That's the True. power of EMR, right? We have the, yeah. the power now. Is paid. That's the other big shift is now the patients are more in demand, right? The, the balance has changed where it's like, I need a doctor. I need a doctor. Now it's like, there's a lot of doctors here. I'm going to pick the one that I like the best. That's going to suit me the best. It's a business. All right. You know, I, I just thought of something, I, I, and uh -oh. it's relevant. So bear with me. Um, e yes, it's a business. Who's moving? Who's moving these things? Is you? Are you playing games again? Oh, no, I'm. I'm hands hands up. I'm just having a All sip right. of vitamin more. So, um, so <laughs> yeah. You know, here's what I just thought of. There's some crazy stuff going. On. It must be a ghost in the system again. So here's what I just thought of. Um, yes, it's a big healthcare is a big business. Uh, the pharmaceutical industry is, is another big adjacent business. And if you think about it, depending on what you're looking at on TV, every other ad is a, an ad for pharmaceutical stuff, right? What's yeah. the what's the one common thing they see in all those drug ads? Call your doctor for more information. Who's answering all those calls? Not Dr. Whitehead, right? I'll tell you that. Doctor, Yes, Dr. Whitehead's probably not going to answer that call. No, man, but, uh, it's, but yet, it's too busy. The, the healthcare industry is more inundated now than they ever have been before. Right, partly because of the pharmaceutical industry making people call them. Right, <laughs> those commercials. So, someone's got to pick up the phone with those commercials. That's right. It is kind of it's a, it's a really good point, Joe. And by the way, I've only recently started watching live TV again and commercials. Not only is every other commercial something for healthcare related, in between, it's some sort of car commercial saying, "Hey, thanks, we're here for you." I'm like, yes, why yes, do I care? Right. What's can, can we just get rid of car commercials altogether, please? I love cars. It drives. I mean. Just so misplaced. Okay, thank you for letting me share that with you. Hey, no Hopefully. problem, man. I'm a car guy too. And if you guys like cars, I got to get, get Instagram channel for you to look at. Okay, just kidding. Um, IT doesn't have the bandwidth. This IT is a real thing. The, this is a very, very serious one, right? IT does not have the bandwidth to implement new IVRs. Andrew, what's an IVR for the folks at home? Well, that's, you know, if a, an advanced auto tenant, an interactive voice response. Hey, thank you for calling. Press one for patient information. Press two if you're feeling anxious. That's an IVR. By the way, the reason this is important, Joe, you know, we have the big hospital story with L.A. County Hospital. We mm -hmm. talk about all the time in these demos. People are probably getting sick of hearing it. But let's apply it to a small little clinic yes. where um, that one IT guy is supporting the phone system, all of the desktop support for like six different clinics. And when they need to make a change to their IVR, or for those of us that are born pre-1980, a phone tree, right? Um, phone tree, love that. They yeah, I know. And they got to get the IT guy to do it, put in a request. I've heard people say, I can't wait six months for this change. Like, I, I know that hmm. there's, there's nurses and practitioners out there that because their system is so antiquated, have to wait until 12 o'clock on Christmas Eve to set the Christmas Eve message <laughs> or the Christmas Eve hour or the Christmas hours. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, and relying Crazy. on IT to do that is exactly. So yeah. we, and you guys should know this, man. we bring a solution that's so intuitive and so really, we always get this compliment, but easy to use. IT no longer becomes a critical part of that, you know, solution. And you can do it without them and you can do I it despite them. You could, you know, but you know what? You could sometimes, if you get the right IT guy with the right frame, the right frame of mind, the right mindset, this is a selling point for him because now he, oh. and by extension, the rest of his team don't have to worry about feeling these calls Absolutely. from angry healthcare practitioners asking them to come and change the IVR, come and sure. do these moves, ads, changes. Can you do all this for me tomorrow, yesterday, two weeks ago? Yeah. So, no, so and I know that IT is the entry point for a lot of you partners. Right, so we can help you. We can help you with 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 with, with conversation starters, kind of like this, so that you know, okay, if IT is the entry point, say this. Right? Well, IT is not the enemy, right? We're we're here to help. Is no, the right, no, 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 right, no, no, right no, answer, absolutely of course. not. Yeah. Um, I mean, did I make them sound like they were the enemy? Did make no, 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 no. Okay, I just want to because I love it IT added, guys. It was an added thing I remember because I uh, because what I remember when you said that exactly. I love the movie too. Yeah, thank you. 
what I remember when you said that was that uh, IT is the entry point for a lot of our partners. Yeah, so I wanted to know that, hey, this, this would resonate with that audience, right? Yeah. Um, the final one here, I'm not going to talk about too much because we'll talk about it later some more. That we are, uh, some, a lot of people complain about a high percentage of broken appointment rates. And we know when that happens. They break mm -hmm. the appointments, then an, an unresolved issue continues going on. And uh, uh, something that has been not diagnosed will continue being undiagnosed and will get, get worse, right? So, whoa, another poll. What the hell is going on here? Adam, Look at that. over to you. Okay. Well, we threw in an extra one here. Um, we got good attend good uh, engagement earlier, but based on, you know, when we when we asked, do we have prospects uh, earlier? We said, well, let's try to fit them into some of those categories that we showed earlier, right? Like, are they multi locations and the networks, the hospitals, the the clinics and chains, uh, individual healthcare providers, uh, doctors, dentists, what have you, um, medical offices that kind of have a limited. Um, if you will, a contact center light, Hunt Group, Ring All Solution. And then we've got the OEMs as well. Um, hey, my wife's uh, actually a, a dental hygienist. So she works with companies like PDT that sell okay. instruments, hand scaling Ooh. instruments all day long, right? She's got a friend who's actually in sales for that. So that's the, the I, I really love that category um, because, hey, I, it's real. You know, it's real. No, it's very much real. And it's a huge business, it's, even though it's sometimes overlooked, right? Here we go. Numbers are coming in. That's great. And you Give know, you, you want the one thing to, to keep in mind here, you're going to hear you're going to hear us mention this all the time. This solution is equally for the single individual general practitioner, doctor, single mm -hmm. guy in the office type of thing. It's for everybody from that or a single person pharmacist pharmacy. Right. From that to the largest municipal healthcare entities in the United States and Canada, right? Mm -hmm. And everything in between. Uh, we have we have that full spectrum of customers, and you know, and we and we have a track record of of supporting everybody from the single person to turning up three hundred seats in thirty six hours for some of these healthcare giants. So don't worry about what size your prospect is. We can help them. And uh, and our solution is is you know it's it's rock solid, right? So let's move on. Poll? Good good oh, good poll there, Adam. That's a very good poll. Maybe we should have oh. a poll about the previous poll. Yeah. Poll <laughs> a poll about polls XM. or poll yeah poll if we want to have polls or not. And then we'll poll. We have a poll on we have go. a poll on whether you think Joe should cut his own hair again. We should have a poll about that. <laughs> let, let your emojis do the talking. Yeah, yes. we already know By the way, answer to that one. Did yeah. you know I made this mistake, Joe? This is why we talk about this. I made the egregious mistake once of uh, referring to a healthcare professional, uh, a nurse practitioner, perhaps as an agent. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, yeah, it was. Hey, you. It's one of those mistakes you only make once, and yeah, so of you know, you 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 take it, you move on. But I I don't want the, everyone on this call to make the same mistake. And you know what? It's a, it, 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 I can appreciate that. You know, these are healthcare sure. professionals. They're they're saving lives. But at the same time, an agent is not a. It's not like it's a. You know, some lowly person. This no, James Bond was an agent. Contact, James Bond was an yeah, agent. Yeah, right. Special services, absolutely. 007. I agree. Yeah. Agents can be cool. Agents I don't know. Cool. No, I think you know people have a have a connotation. They have a of, misconception that oh, it is agent, whatever. But you know, but just think about what did we talk about at the beginning of this of this presentation? Who gives the first impressions? Those the agents, agent. right? Yeah, absolutely. That, that that person or that team can make or break the in the interactions involving your hosp your healthcare institution, right? Yeah. And so um, this is exactly so, so that's so, what so we, like, we we talk about how this software solves problems for them, mm. not about anything about how the tools are going to, like you said here, make them you know perceive them as marginalizing the role, and yeah. that's really where it comes from, right? That old school connotation. But I think I'm going to start saying super agent, super agent. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I'll just give right? them a number: 005, 006. <laughs> yeah, I know? always. Yeah, that's very cool. Always the double. So yeah. So so the first barrier is you know you want to make sure you know who you're talking to, right? Um, Yes, like Andrew said, those in healthcare don't see themselves as a contact center, even though you know every health, every hospital has one for sure, guarantee it, right? They might um, not call it a call center or a contact center, but it's definitely yeah, a group of people sitting in a room. That's a good point. They may, not, they may call it something else. They, <laughs> it, they may call it something else, but it's performing the same function. Yeah. Just be aware of that and be you know and, and, and try to position yourself accordingly. Now, the next one here is is probably the most important, the most frequent one you're going to get. The security and the compliance question. They may say, 
Well, you know, we have a very, we run a very secure environment around here. We're very concerned about moving to the cloud or integrating something else or installing something new. And this is so where you just, this is a simple answer. And Andrew's going to give it to you. What is it? Well, if you're not HIPAA compliant, it's a non-starter. Don't even show up to the call. We are, of course. And, and as we mentioned before, right? Whether it's HIPAA, US, PIPEDA, yeah. we call it in Canada. Uh, PCI compliance comes up in other verticals PCI as well from the, yeah. from the credit card and banking industry. And we are compliant. And and another, and you, I wish you had a, we have, we can provide AOCs, we call them for those things, which are attestations of compliance, these scans mm -hmm. that, our network undergoes by third parties to ensure that the standards are being met. And we use Amazon and Azure for storage. And those guys are inherently also compliant yep. from a storage perspective. So all of these things are just meant to give you the confidence to put those fears uh, at ease immediately when yeah. it comes to any sort of compliance um, you you know, got it. rebuttals. Okay, so again, this is, a, this is a reference deck. Apologies for this small font. But these are things that you can use, you can memorize, you could all that stuff. You could you could use these to start a conversation. How do you handle emergency notifications or patient scheduling or outbound outbound communications in general? You know, that's right. gonna open up the conversation for all dynotes, right? Dynamic notifications yes. tools. No, um, that works for sure. Exactly. It's a it's number one seller. It's a huge one. That's why I have it listed up there yeah. as number one. Um, can you easily tell the difference between a new and existing patient? CRM integration, right? EMR integration, EMR, that'll help. Yeah, um, prior a VIP line, so that when Dr. VIP Whitehead calls, line. he goes to the top of the queue instead of yeah. the bottom of the queue. You know, this is a real thing. What about if you could tell the difference between various types of calls? I'm Man. calling in, a, I, I, I'm sniffling, I have a flavonology, as opposed to, hey, I've just chopped my arm off. Um, you know, you want to be able to, to handle, to at least classify those calls. <laughs> well, it's not just that. It's, it's if, if people are calling for medical related things versus administrative things it helps yes, to yes, know where those are, so you can staff accordingly right like yeah, man, yeah, i need yeah, three yeah. more nurses or you know i need three good, more yeah. administrators right because why are people remember, calling right that's another remember one. a lot of the costs coming into the hospital have nothing to do with um with with health it could be billing no can you right? transmit to room 703 no this is not the switchboard you got to call this number all right i'll transmit the switchboard like literally come on people are people you can take all yeah. calls by the way you know who's in 703 who's in 703 no, Adam, yeah. there's no okay. joke there. There was no joke there. I just wondered if you knew. All right. Does the phone ring constantly until it's answered? How often do calls go unanswered? This is the whole abandon rate, abandon, abandonment rate type of thing, right? Joe, did you know when you're in an office and you hear the phone ringing all the time? Did you know that the customer can usually hear that ringing too? Or the patient that's, that's calling? Point. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yes, that's right. Everybody raise your hand if you like the sound of a phone ringing. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Point made. I know. I, think, me, I know. Me just let mine ring. Just oh my god. Oh, silence is nice. This is why everybody's yeah. phone's on silent. Oh, someone's ringing me, but I can't hear it. Um, on, it's true. Hot on the heels of the of the phone not being answered. Thing is, how many calls or appointments do you miss? Why do I have two? You miss. That must be uh, Adam. What's wrong with you? It's do you miss? Even though Adam, I'm just poking I did that just to sabotage. You, I know, right? Yeah. No, let's see who's paying how attention. How many calls this... do you miss, and how do you know? How do you get back to those missed opportunities and those missed calls? Right. The smaller the clinic, the more important. Question. Dude, Are these not you... thought provoking? Yeah, very thought provoking. It's you provoking make me my thoughts. It. I'll tell you that right now. They're provoking my thoughts. Okay. Do you have insights on, on how your current call system impacts your business and or patient care? Uh, well, Mark, marketing wrote that question. Move on. We wrote let's, that let's, question. But, you know, I'm, but just gonna hang, I'm hanging up on you if you say that question. There's two different worlds at play here. There, there's the business side of the hospital and there's the, and there's the, 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 the actual you know, healthcare That's side, true. right? Yeah. Sure. Someone in, in charge of patient experience would actually care about that yes, stuff. They'll care right. about it in a large hospital. Have you considered care and patient continuity? This is where you're going to get a little caught up on words. You pro everybody here would know about business continuity in the, in the healthcare sector. They can refer to it as care continuity or pace and or patient continuity how would you handle this in the event of a natural disaster or, or other type of disaster right i you know what i would say i would say yo do you have a plan for the next covid it, well, yeah it doesn't you know what i mean that makes, it real. That makes it real it's real no obviously i'm kidding but like this is like convincing people that this is going to be important to them is yeah the more i think everybody already has woken up to the fact that oops i gotta fix this immediately yeah this this may not be the last one right how do we plan for the next one Mm -hmm. um, do you have call recording for insurance training and liability purposes? I mean, no, no 
clinic or hospital thinks about this 10, 20 years ago when they bought that old PBX that they're still, you know, gumming together. This is really, really critical, important, especially in healthcare. And yeah. again, not as widely adopted early on like they did with the banks and all of the other folks that we already know were, you know, market leaders. But now it's so critical. If you don't record calls, and it's not even about confidentiality, it's about protecting one another at this point yeah. when, when you're recording calls. It's really important. And then finally, and this one is by no means the least of importance, do you need to remote enable your care teams or offer telehealth services? Yeah. So much that's, telehealth going on right now, eh? That's the biggest rage right now for obvious reasons, right? I don't know why we were so slow to adopt it. I love telehealth. I'd love to just call up a doctor and talk about it's my so convenient, right? It's, it's the most man. convenient thing ever. I don't know if I do a video call, though, like this. It's a little bit intrusive. Probably not, yeah. So key selling points is where we're going to get we're getting we're getting you know to the to the Features. crux of the matter here, right? Uh, dynamic notifications. We talked about that a lot. That's one of the biggest use cases for healthcare. Effective outreach to be able to reach out to their customers, and also our our version of 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 this is two is two way, right? Give us some. Well, Adam you, Adam Adam has a nice story around this. I mean, he uncovered this in the last uh, video ah. uh, video testimonial. So. Um, he reminded me in the last video testimonial that we did with a, a guy, mm. some other guy named Joe, that um, that dynamic notifications is two way. Yeah. Yes. Why don't you walk it, us through that? Well, I, it, the best way to put it is is the way our our head of product, Larry, puts it. It's dynamic notifications is an incredible force for outreach from the contract contact center, but it's also awesome for in reach. What does that mean? It means I get a message or a notification or an email. I am the patient. I receive this. It's great that I've given, been given a heads up that there's, let's say, an appointment for me tomorrow. But what if I then want to respond and say, you know what, can we push that out a few days? Or there's actually something I need to bring to that meeting that I maybe need to flag to mm. the doctor. And for Dinos to be able to then respond to that or, as the case may be, be connected to an agent, right? Yeah. Be connected, be brought back into that queue to say, yo, yeah, I'm still on board for the appointment tomorrow, but there's this thing we need to um, we need to take care of, or maybe I need to reschedule. So I guess the, the, the main message there is it's awesome for outreach, but don't forget the ability to inreach, to draw someone back in once they've received a communication. I think that's really powerful. Right. And Beautiful. most most of those EMRs, those platforms, Joe, and, and Adam, they already have this product for mm-hmm. outreach. But it does not have the inreach. That is the difference right. there, right? It's mm. it's a it's not like when LA County had their you know what X number of no shows, you know the reason it got backfilled so quickly is people could connect live to an operator and reschedule live on the spot. They could right. backfill appointments same day. Like you can't do that without that kind of backtalk, right? And um, some of the old the systems that that are don't have it today are like you have an appointment, blah 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 blah. If you don't want to have this appointment, call this number. That's a pain. I don't know if I'm doing that, right? Like, I, how do I call a number that I'm listening to? Hang on, I got to write it down. Listening to the way, like, this is seriously, I'm thinking about this. I'm writing, I could be in my car, get that thing and just say, press one, I need to reschedule. Right. Boom, and I'm connected. I, I, I yeah, could not. Ex- and that's it. It's not, only, it's not only the physical inconvenience or the technical hassle. Both of these things are true. Sure. But also, it's the loss of context. When I was, when I got that message, I was in the zone. I was thinking about what had to happen next. My head was there. I was right. like engaged with, okay, this is what I have to do to make this happen. You remove that by a couple minutes, oh, man, yeah. like we're all busy. Ooh. We're on to something else. Like yeah, I don't I'm on to the next thing. Gone, squirrel. Right? Yeah, squirrel. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> my name is Doug. <laughs> all righty, let's speed through here. We're sensitive of time. Uh, auto appointment reminders. That's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, multi-channel for optimal patient interaction because remember, they're interacting with you on more than this phone. It's, it's, it's voice. It's... Uh, SMS chat, uh, online, et cetera. Uh, here's a key one, the super key. I'll tell you why. It's to- we are totally vendor and network agnostic. You're going to find these multi, um, multi-network and multi-vendor, uh, multi-equipment networks in these hospitals because, remember, they've existed for a long time. They've been, yeah. they, everything, everything they buy that's new, they integrate it with, what, with what's there before. So you get a hodgepodge of... You know, these, these Frankenstein networks with some Mitel here, some Nortel there, some Avaya here, some Cisco there. You know sometimes what? Sometimes from care. acquisition. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's, it's for acquisition point. or, you know, whatever. Just had to build a new building, put something newer in the new space. 
happens so a lot. I, I can't tell you how many times we've won business because of being vendor and network agnostic, right? So keep that in mind. Um, Boostable on demand, easily scalable. That's a massive thing. I mean, we've been, and we, and people, and we're, right now we're living that. People are asking for, can you turn up 200 seats uh, in a couple of days? Yes, we can, right? Um, final one here, custom reports and integrations at no extra charge. Think about that for a minute. Custom reports and integrations with your EMR at no charge. This is what other people charge professional services fees for, right? It's a massive distinction. Yeah, a big, take advantage of it while you can. Yeah, for yeah, sure. And, and the one thing that I that I that that's not here, but you know, I would I like to mention this at every every webinar. The other key selling point here is that Intermediate Contact Center is part of the Intermediate Business Cloud, which is an extremely, I mean, it's pretty much untouchable at this point. You got you got video conferencing via any meeting. You have you use United Unified Communications via Unite. You got Intermediate Contact Center. You got Secure File Share via Security Sync. It's a it's a it's a staggering list, a portfolio of cloud services that really I, who else who else can compare with that? Listen, I'm everybody, saying everybody else has months. a portion of something, but we have Yo, all I, of it. Yeah, nobody's got this stack. It's the best, honestly, out there. You can take pieces from other places, but the end-to-end yeah. -end completeness of these products is unbeatable. And the integration of all of them into in, in, into a single pane of glass. I mean, we listen, we might be a little biased because we use it every day. I, I, Andrew and I have been working, you know, a lot of us have been working from home, re working remotely. We're not working from the same home. Let's not get crazy here. We're working, we've been working remotely for for a long time right yeah. and, and we we use we use we use a whole bunch of different tools before all um, of them at intermedia we are not wanting for the skype for businesses and the ms teams and all these different things that we used to use before and got hooked on we started using this stuff is it this instantly is great. better Hey, yeah. listen, nothing, nothing against Microsoft products. They're amazing. And hey, guess what? Our, our CCAS solution works beautifully with them. So hey, That's thumbs right. up hey, there. I was, I was raised on Microsoft <laughs> products. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it makes good stuff, but and, and Microsoft doesn't have a CCAS solution, right? I mean, it's lacking other features that we bring to the that's table. Key. Yes, yeah, that's right. Um, what do we have here? Okay, so again, reference deck, small stuff. Remember those six things we talked about before? You know, patient experience yes. and all those different things. Intermediate Contact Center is one of the few end-to-end -end patient care solutions out there. We right. got omni-channel and multi-channel stuff on patient experience. We have automated outbound, phone, SMS, all those types of notifications for outreach. We got UC collaboration tools, teleages, remote health, all those different things. Listen, we it's an end-to-end. -end. We touch everything from the integration side to the patient care side. Look at all that stuff we rattled off there on the compliance piece. HIPAA Amazing. compliant high trust certification, role-based authentication, encryption, you name it, right? There's so much end to that end. the slide is impossible to read. Uh, so yes, I'm gonna it's give so you... much that this is size two font, and if certain other <laughs> folks in here saw it that like to see size 20 font on every slide, they'd be kicking me in my head right now. So I'm glad you're not seeing it. Let me also say it's a reference deck. Yeah, you guys can take this and just steal, copy and paste whatever you need. Steal with pride. Steal with pride. You're our partners. You are, you are our way to get this out to the market, right? So go ahead and steal with pride. What else do we have here? How, okay, here's where we're going to close off on some nice points here. How, C, how contact center? CCAS. What's CCAS? What's CCAS, Andrew? Contact center as a service. Last time so you asked me that question, I fumbled it up. Can you believe that? I should lose my job. I almost fumbled the answer. So there we go. Know, two right? for two. So how contact center has helped healthcare entities and social services, right? So yes. healthcare entities, broad-based, very general term, but we also threw social services in there as well because it's real. They, they're linked, right, in many it's cases. There. They are. So, um, mental health, mental health, right? Mental health, yeah, exactly, right? Sure. So uh, we, we enable telehealth and remote care for even the smallest health service entities, bear that in mind. Oh. IVR menus to help send people to the right departments who they want to reach. Skills-based routing to get to those specific doctors and clinicians, callback functions, outreach functionality. We talked about dynamic notifications, right? And, and again, all this is available for every size healthcare institute. Pharmacies, let's not forget the pharmacies out there. They're There's all over the place, yeah. right? And, and we can help them remote enable their customer, inter their patient and customer. Remember, they have both their patient all or their customer to... interactions in those two days. 
And they're all going to deliveries too. You notice in that, right, Joe? So that's a whole that, extra layer of about that. SMS right. reminders and appointment reminders. I'm delivering yeah. your food. Renewal of your prescription, not food, your prescription, right? Renewal of yeah. your prescription in the IVR. Like they're trying to yeah. automate a lot of this. Pharmacies are really taking, they're almost like takeout at this point. You know what, that's, 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 why you thought of, that's why you thought about food because they're doing the same, they have adopted the same model as the restaurants with the takeout. And I'm you know? hungry, I think. Yeah. And we're starving. You probably want to go and so, cook. What are you what are you buying these days? What is it? This week it's uh from from HelloFresh. We've got spaghetti and meatballs tonight. Lamb meatballs. Oh, you, you so can't it's a real man. simple, simple dinner tonight. Yeah. If you were if you weren't living uh, three point five hours away from me, I'd come over. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. All right. So to cap it all off, right? So proven solution. This is a proven solution we're talking to you about here. We have massive wins across North America. We are the only end-to-end -end patient care solution. This solution is, available, is applicable to any, any size, from the single doctor to the statewide municipal health care, um, yeah. where we have been recommended several times by leading global research and advisory firms. We don't want to list them here, but there's several. Uh, mm -hmm. Fully compliant, zero risk. We just, we just name-dropped a few uh, for LA County, New York, Presbyterian, Health Canada, et cetera. And there's more that we didn't even get a chance to put on, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, the, so, and also something to bear in mind: healthcare uh, is big on RFPs. In some cases, the bigger the healthcare institution, the more likely they are to go to RFP. Um, you can f you feel f comfortable in knowing that we have material that we can provide you with. If you just need to, you know, match, you know, they, they they've asked for these features and they're yes. listed here. You know, we can we can help you with the RFPs, right? But we have collateral that would also make it easy for you to fill out those Definitely. RFPs, right? Yeah, we're. Those can be overwhelming. We're definitely here to help with those, and we do well in RFPs because the product is definitely, you know, we does went, what you know what you know to. why you know why we win a lot of these RFPs because of the the agnostic nature of, of, of the solution. Sure. Some of these RFPs require you to work on top of these mixed network environments. That's, that's just one of the reasons. Definitely, it's a big one. I mean, look at Health Canada. Um, you know, you guys are all laughing. Who cares? It's Canada, Health Canada. That's the federal government. But a lot of those guys still use Centrex lines. I don't know if you guys know what Centrex lines are. You know, dial nine to get out. Um, hmm. And it's so. I mean, there's not any. There's no CCAS solution for that particular product. It's a basic phone line. So it's really interesting to be able to layer over the top, like you say, Joe, to to, yeah. to bring all of this advanced functionality without the risk of ripping out your old phone system and that kind of thing. Right. Plus, I was going to say before too, like you were talking about the IT folks on the call. Like you're already the trusted advisor for a lot of these people, um, you know you're you're the voice of reason in that That's environment, right. and and so you bring the solution it. to the table yeah. absolutely as much as you can. The credibility is is tremendous. Oh, All right, another poll, just in yeah. time. And it was a good transition, Joe. You were just talking about some of the ways we can assist. We were talking about marketing. some of the things we can do. Mm -hmm. We have, so yeah, we, I was just like talking about from the RFP side, but we have even more than that. We have, um, we have success cases. We have videos, video testimonials. We even have blogs if you want to share some stuff on your own websites. We have, um, we have uh, feature sheets. Like if you want something specifically on dynamic notifications, we can provide you with that. Um, there, I mean, there's just there's there's no shortage of 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 uh, of material available on this site. Training material to too. Yeah, if you just <laughs> want to talk and you have I mean, whatever, no, 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 like, yeah. you have an idea, you have a prospect, you just want yeah, to yeah, yeah. talk it out. We're here for you for sure. Yeah, absolutely, man. You need to socialize. Hey, uh, I don't know if this guy is a prospect or not. What do you think? So mention it to us. We, we'll help you qualify it. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Love seeing 100 percent there. That's that's always Love a nice. Love seeing 100 uh, there, right? Uh -huh. So we uh, nice look, look, at how, look at look at how we timed it. It's 4:29. 4, anybody on the East Coast? And uh, look at that. So we're at the Q and A section now. Do we have any uh, any questions, uh, at Mr. Verbaki? Yes, I caught a couple along the way. They didn't go into the Q and A, but that's cool. No, um, just automatically ignore any questions from Peter Cache, if that's okay with you. Oh, zero <laughs> question. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, okay, um, okay, so we have two. Um, one of these is fun. I'm going to take a crack at it. Uh, let's pass this one to you, Andrew. Um, oh. What modes does Dynote support? Not not too difficult. No, that's not too difficult. So um, voice, um, where it's either recorded message or text speech from a dynamic perspective, SMS, and email. Uh, SMS and email are outbound only, not uh, inbound, but voice is outbound and inbound. So just as an FYI. So don't we have uh, multiple uh don't we also have multiple languages 
Oh, of course you can you can speak yep. in multiple languages. You can yeah. record in any language you want. A universal yeah. languages, really. But and text to speech at the same time supports only the the three main North American languages: Spanish, English, and French. Good one. Yeah. Okay, next one up. You know what? I'll take a crack at this. I don't usually field that many questions. Um, earlier, you you're, guys you're feeling said, pretty oh, saucy today, aren't you, Adam? Feeling saucy. Maybe I'm getting out of line. No, it could be that. <laughs> but no one's asked me for impressions, so that that's always a good day. Um, yeah. Earlier, you guys said both auto attendance and IVRs. What's the difference? I'm going to take a crack at this. Um, okay, so an auto attendant and an IVR to a certain point do the same thing. It can receive a call, present a, a, an option to the caller via voice. That's the voice component, and route it. They start getting a little different after that. Um, auto attendant usually goes to things like various uh, automatic call distribution schemes like, uh, you know, ring all or sequential or round robin or what have you. Um, it can do that. That's great. With an IVR, you might be going to something like uh, a qualitative measure, like skills-based routing and or something like that, for example. Um, also, if you think about things like extensibility, what can you do Ooh. with an IVR? Well, geez, the, the answer is almost anything when you integrate, right? You could, Andrew, you had a great, a great one earlier, renew an RX. You could mm. take a payment. You could look up some kind of a record in a secure, uh, via secure method. You could um, request an appointment. I mean, it, it, the applications there are almost endless. So I guess my answer, succinct answer would be up to a point, they're very similar, but you can do a lot more with an IVR. Um, and I'll also note, this is just a funny thing. Um, we always say interactive voice response, but you interact yes. with it usually through the keypad. I've always found that slightly ironic. I have too. That's why I hate. That's why I hate defining what an IVR is. But you bang on with that differentiation. Yeah, well Adam, done, that's man. fantastic. Um, I throw you know the other one because we do a lot of it anyway. Throw surveys in there, right? Surveys are cool, just IVRs one. that you. Hey, how did you like our service today? Press from one to ten. That is an IVR. An auto attendant can't do that. Obviously, IVR can collect data, right? Good one. Yeah. Beautiful. Th yeah, like I, no one really asked those questions. Was that Ron that asked that question? Um, no, well, that was Ron actually... Just asked, Ron just asked a, a different new question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah. How do you implement yeah. skills-based routing? Is it through the IVR and caller-based or through agent skills and menu selection? So that's interesting because in our world, an IVR, uh, in, 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 in our world, a queue and a skill are kind of the same thing. So you would think about you add agents to, to queues. Uh, and then you can define the skill they have of answering calls in those queues. So if you have a, you know, a sales queue, you can um, skill your agents from one to 10. So there's two ways to do it, but we route the calls based on those two options you mentioned, but in the admin portal, you can skill up or down agents based on how you want the priority of calls to be delivered. Did I answer that right? Does that make sense? It's very good. And I think okay, the connection good. between skill and queue is really important. That might not be immediately obvious, but once you jump yeah. into this, that's really important to know um, that they're virtually synonymous, right? And that really helps. Skill, a lot of systems are very complex with their waiting and stuff. Oh, we, we really try to keep it very simple in how you can wait things in a queue versus skilling an agent that could apply to multiple queues. And then, then all mm. of a sudden, things start getting hairy. I, I just like our interface a little bit better. Thanks for asking that question, Ron. Thanks, Thanks one, Ron. Anything else there, Adam? That's all I've got so far, fellas. Fantastic. Well, I guess that uh, I guess that brings us to the end of the webinar. I want to thank uh, my colleagues, Adrew and Adam. Yes. I think we had Thanks, another Adam. good time today. Thank you all for showing up. We hope this was useful for everybody. Uh, we're not we're not going to be doing a webinar next week Wednesday, but we're going to be coming back the week after with an incredible new uh, array of topics. Um, so we look forward to see you folks then. Uh, we enjoy being here as much as you guys do. So um, I will. we will see you in, what is it? Week after next. There you go. Two weeks. weeks. Yep. Thanks, Two weeks. Stay safe. Stay safe, Thank Adam. You folks. Stay safe and take care. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, everyone. Take care.